For a long time, there have been talks about Russia gathering its troops at our borders, and that there is a high possibility of full-scale invasion unfolding. But I did not believe that. The war has been going on since 2014. Yes, it did stop at the east geographically, but so many lives from around the country, mostly western and central parts of it, were lost there. Therefore, the whole country suffered, although only those who were related to the war directly felt that. And everyone else lived as if all is good, or maybe all is bad, better to live abroad, there's nothing good for us here, Ukraine has no future. We all got used to it, in different ways, but still got used to it. That's why we didn't believe it. Almost every national holiday or even every season of the year, they would gather their troops at our borders, and yet nothing changed, at a global scale at least. I did not believe it, or rather I didn't want to believe it, and looked for all kinds of signs to reassure myself that I was right. Everything was just as usual. We peacefully went to bed. Tomorrow should have been just another normal Thursday. We all just recovered from flu, probably COVID. I just got my driver's license, finally. We have finally repaired our living room. I was still sleeping when I heard someone rushing down restlessly. It was still quite dark outside, so it must have been pretty early, I gathered. Then I heard water running and the sounds of bottles and other kinds of jars being filled up with it. But what for? No, this can't be happening, it can't be, I thought as I quickly jumped off the bed and put on a robe over my pajamas. At that moment the news started playing on the laptop in the kitchen. The full-scale war has begun. It was 4.30 a.m. when my parents first heard jet fighters circling over our area for half an hour. These were our jet fighters. And then, at 6 a.m., my uncle from Kharkiv called and said, It has begun. We are being shelled. Hi, I'm Yuri. I'm Ina. Diana. And this is Podcast Uncensored. Поехали. Okay, so uh, this episode is going to be a little bit different from what we've been doing. Um, yeah, it's uh, not an interview podcast. It's just uh, it's it just discussion. us three. Yeah, uh, discussion on a couch. Yeah. Oh, maybe we should call it like that. <laughs> oh, a good name. Actually, yeah, it's a yeah, good yeah. name. Discussion yeah. on the couch. Yeah, so it should be it should be shorter and um, a lot more simple. Right. Yeah, and uh, we're just gonna have uh, like um, a specific topic we're gonna talk about, uh, just like today. And today we're gonna talk about um, February twenty fourth. Yes, as it's getting closer and closer to I mean being it's uh two years two years anniversary of right. uh full scale war in Ukraine yes. and this it's it's sort of a special episode dedicated to um this date dedicated to what happened two years ago and what's still happening right now mm-hmm. so yeah if I don't know if anyone wants to add it some add something you can I think no. I think it's good. Okay. I think it's good. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, I I guess we will start sharing. Um, right. So in the beginning, we wanna well, we're gonna share about our memories from that very day, the twenty fourth of February, maybe uh, uh the twenty fifth as well. But mainly, we will focus on that day. And uh, later in this video, in the second part, we will share more about what has changed in our perception, about how we feel about that, the whole thing. Uh, and basically, yeah, that's what, what we're planning to talk about here. So let's start um, with um, talking a little bit about what it was like at the beginning, at that day. Um, 
<laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess we can start with uh, with the piece you just read. Um, you wrote it, right? Right, right. It was actually yeah. a piece uh, I wrote, like in sort of like a war diary, um, and uh, yeah, I just translated it in English, and uh, these were kind of the my memories, my personal memories of that very morning um, and the very things that I actually felt about that whole thing and how it just didn't feel real and I guess all of it just shows how naive we were at that time even though it's been almost eight years since the war was going on in Ukraine we still were so naive in that oh yeah even though we kind of expected it at least we did. Yeah, we saw news. We saw, like, um, Biden talk about, you know, how Russia is planning to invade Ukraine and other, many other things. But still, it just didn't feel real. Like, I, as as I wrote in my diary, I simply didn't want to believe that it was true. <laughs> that yeah. it was going to happen. But it did. Yeah. It did. It hit hard. Yeah. It hit hard. Anything to add to naivety? <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> I felt the same on the first day of the invasion. Uh, and even reading through my own uh, notes and memories, which I wrote down, exactly the same feeling. I'm reading them right now and I'm like, mm, no, you were so naive, Diana. This, I, is, uh, right. this, is, this is not the actual reality. It's just uh, right. so different. I even, I even remember to listening to some uh, messages, voice messages I sent over to you mm -hmm, the very yeah. first days mm -hmm. because you were abroad. Uh, otherwise, we would have, I think, met at least because we live nearby. Uh, but uh, that was the only thing I could do. And how I told the stories about uh, what are what I've heard from our um, neighbors. neighbors, right? And, and just uh, the emotion of that is so naive. It's so... <gasps> <laughs> yes. It's like that. It I just it is saying, ninety percent or ninety five percent of emotion and five percent of reason. R right, right. It feels. It, I yeah. even laughed as I listened. We laughed when we listened to it, uh, like a few days mm -hmm. ago. It was, I don't know, but but it was the the emotions were real. <laughs> yeah, I think that that is one of uh, one of the biggest differences and shifts is that in the very beginning we perceived everything with emotions only. Uh, we didn't have that filter of. You know what is uh, what's propaganda? What is manipulation? What is the right. psychological operations they're doing in our minds? We were just we saw that on the news. We believe that, and uh, uh, I think that uh, contributed a lot to our emotional uh, emotional um, perception of everything, and also it prompted a lot of naivety in that way. Right. Oh yeah, we we, we didn't even like we didn't even filtered the information that was not at all that, that we received like it, Consumed it was just a lot of information yeah sure. constant news like everything everything we saw like we yeah and what is interesting is we that absorbed in everything. the first days we we perceived all the information said by ukrainians yeah right. the truth yeah but yeah. now right. we're like we know that this one is like mm. so yeah uh, we'll talk about the, what it is, what it's like now later. But one thing is that I think it also a part of naivety that, well, ex for mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm. it was that all like everything that comes from Ukraine, this is like this is truth, this is right, good, right? But not the reality, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. this naivety is actually it was very much um, understandable because of the uh that constant the fear that we felt mm. because it, it was just so overwhelming i don't know i felt um like my body was shaking all over while i was listening to those news in the kitchen like okay. literally it just i was like <sighs> i couldn't understand what was going on it it was so scary because we didn't even know if we are going to stand as a country till the evening um Till the end of the day, we, we didn't know what waited for us uh, in the nearest few hours. Mm -hmm. It was so abrupt, it was so massive and all over the place and really like overwhelming. Well, maybe I'm a <laughs> bit dull, I don't know. I, I did not expect our country to fall 
like within a day or or three but um uh still I, i i remember the fear i remember the the reality hitting me that oh um we could totally have to leave our house and even go abroad because like forever like yeah forever maybe? because because our country could be um mm. overtaken and occupied c- even could destroyed. be occupied and and we could right. even uh like you know go abroad and then like receive the information that well your house is destroyed right i and mean no... it's war so right. yeah like a lot of our friends experienced this actually like, yeah in the east and, and nowhere the to south, go back right there's a lot of people who don't have their houses anymore right places to live yeah, yeah so so <laughs> yeah we we at the, in the very first day i remember the thought uh like it was a prevailing thought over the media we have to stand for a day and when the day passed it was we have right. to stand for three days and then right. we will see what happens actually we will have a clearer picture of what awaits ukraine and that that uh, number always increased and increased and increased and now it's almost two years Yeah, and at um, that time we were right. still naive, expecting, like I don't know, us to end the war within like what? Uh, within like, within like so few months. Yeah, yeah, within and, two and or three weeks. We expected, we expected Mom. like I don't know, maybe NATO or <laughs> other countries to step in. So, so yeah. So at that time, I actually, actually, I forgot about this thing that. Um, this message that we have to stand at least one day or we have to right. stand at least three days at this point i, I already already forgot about that like <laughs> it's so it faded right. away like i I'm, i don't know i'm just so used to it right now that i, I don't even remember that. oh yeah that 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 was a thing we didn't really know if we would stand even three days yeah and that's how the counting of days of uh, began yeah of our existence actually began like the, the part, okay we still it's day six six hundred and seventy five or whatsoever and we're still standing we still exist yay and um, another thing that we felt at the time quite strongly I think because it was so abrupt and overwhelming uh, the unity of our people how everything yeah. got. Well, we didn't feel it. We, it was, we didn't just feel it. It was actually there. Right, right. It was there. Everyone uh, was helping other people. Like, everyone was so open, helpful, and understanding, and, like, doing everything, as, as well as our um, international partners, as well, who received thousands of um, our... hundreds of thousands of our people right. yeah, yeah. Uh, at that time. And it was so amazing to feel that we're not actually alone in this and then there is some unity inside the country and also we felt the support from outside the country from our partners and friends from um uh, abroad whom we are thankful for the uh, prayer and for the support mm. um yeah and it 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 was present there and we, we felt that definitely really people definitely helped other people to move from one place to another and all, all oftentimes did that without taking any money for it or um, letting someone stay in their house people they don't know at all uh, which isn't very popular among like regular people i would say it's more common for christians i think but it's not as common well, for uh, just uh, <laughs> i mean it's very common for us at but least, not for at most least of the people. missionary <laughs> families i guess i, I don't right. know we we are used to it. that's whatever yeah but me no, i think it is popular among christians i mean it's, right uh, right you don't necessarily have to be like a, a missionary by by your ministry it's just a general yeah thing. it's a like, common, it's a common it's thing a, let's say it's more accepted in the christian community rather than just in yeah. um, people i mean it's a common to thing to, to have guests right. in general but in the christian not just uh, but not, not just get it. yeah 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 who, who are saying overnight yeah and that that happened as well and a lot of things like people from the parts that were safer from the west they were going to uh central parts for instance each irping bucha and they were trying to get people out and some even died there yeah and like a lot of things yeah that unity was present yeah that's true 
and I remember <laughs> the first oh. what week, mm -hmm. and I remember have how we just regular men from uh, from our village, we cooperated, uh, we we were together, and we uh, we ourselves built a checkpoint uh, mm -hmm. at at, um, at one entrance to our. Uh, village because we have a few of them and at one entrance we just are uh, are part of uh, village we gather together and we we put blocks we uh, filled um like uh, bags with sand and stuff and mm -hmm. uh, i remember the feeling where um you don't really care how much the country or the situation might need like I remember that we were ready to like sacrifice anything. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you need blocks of uh, concrete. Okay, Please. sure. We were like mm -hmm. all the neighbors who had some uh, because they had construction or because I don't know. It's just kept it. Yeah, it just stayed of. there. Uh, we need forklifts for that. Okay, sure. We, we found them within like what ten minutes, and they were here. And uh, right. we needed... everyone was ready to sacrifice something of their own yeah. for the sake of the country, for the sake of our people. Yeah, and and uh, people. and the the right. feeling, the feeling you get it it it's incredible because, um. Not only you feel like a family, you feel like one organism, mm -hmm. like literally. You feel like a nation. I think right. I wrote that in my diary that, well, that was that was a little bit later when I came back to Ukraine, but I said. I think I know what a nation feels like now. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a. That's a. Gonna that's use a quote. That as a title. That's a quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Great. Great one. Yeah, and and uh, just to just to sum that up, that's a that's a great way to say it. Yes. And then we could really feel it, and we could really see it. Yeah. And then another thing that was like a very a personal thing to me is that uh, it's about the night. <laughs> Not the night, maybe, the night uh, in general. I think the media a... made it about the night. But, uh, because I remember re uh, be, uh, being abroad, mm -hmm. and I would read on the news, be like, this night is crucial. And then you wake up the next morning, and then this night is crucial. <laughs> like, every night is crucial. <laughs> right. Every well, at that, point, at that point, it, it, yes, like, it was true. It was. But another thing about the night was, uh, the, as a part of the day, at some, like, on one hand, I couldn't wait for it because it was that, like, small amount of time when you could actually forget about, re about everything. Although, I still dreamt about war for, like, a, a few months in a row. Well, I mean, but, cons considering that we, we slept for, like, what, four or five hours right. because we just, couldn't sleep any longer um the overall you could just i don't know rest a little bit but on the other hand i was so afraid of the night because i knew that the worst things always happen either during the night or very early in the morning um and it was like this dual feeling I was feeling at the same time i wanted to go to sleep but i didn't want to go to sleep at the same time it was i don't know if any like other people felt that but that's something that uh for the first time i guess in my life i've experienced yeah, right that for sure. but i i i never i never for me i never wanted to go to bed because i knew that every single morning i had to wake up to the bad news and they every single morning they would be worse than the morning before right so I was like oh. yes yes oh no yeah i remember oh. i, I ha having uh, mixed feelings about the about the nights as well because like I mean, at one point, yeah, you're just you're just shutting off. You, 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 I mean, you have to rest. Like, even though we literally were sleeping for like three to five hours, because we just could not sleep any longer. We were like, what, going to bed at two a.m., three a.m., and sleeping to till like what, six, seven a.m. and then. Then you just you just can't sleep because, for example, um, someone someone's already watching the news. Or the siren went went off. Yeah, it often the happened sirens. that after that we didn't sleep. Or the siren went yeah. off during the, during the night. Yes, sometimes we actually heard the siren 
uh, here in this room, the very room where we actually spend most of our time <laughs> in the first two weeks. Uh, yeah, the, the, the studio, studio we're filming in... was our shelter. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it looked a little bit differently, but uh, still, uh, that's where we spend most of our times. And even, even though it's uh, a little bit like so- soundproof and isolated, uh, we still heard sometimes the sirens from the city that or the ones we ha- had in village but or on, it, we had a system on a phone, the app of course, that yeah, would so, uh, and it, 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 alarm it, us every time the, uh, the siren. And like, it's loud. So, <laughs> so like you can't Especially sleep. on it's, mom's phone. <laughs> on mom's, yeah. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> knows loud. that mom's phone <laughs> is the loudest. Right. Yeah. So, so like it was uh, instead of an alarm. Right, so, so, so sometimes we would wake would, up for would, an hour during the yeah, night. Yeah, it would go off in the middle of the night and we would, like, everyone just woke up and... We couldn't sleep or anything. We would pray, we would start right. reading the news again, we would start checking if if our friends or relatives in, safe. in the, um, like, central or eastern parts of Ukraine are, are safe or alive. Uh, yeah, so the nights were... Boy, you didn't you, you didn't sleep least. that much. So, <laughs> did you feel you didn't sleep that much, and mm-hmm. then you felt tired, or you didn't sleep that much because sleep wasn't there, and you were feeling kind of fine? Basically, I though, think physically, I'm. I mean, physically, uh, physically, we were tired. It's right. just that. Uh, but tired uh, from from the emotional and all I think, of the stuff, but or tired because you didn't sleep. I think more about the emotion. It was more yeah. about the mo- emotional yeah. part because, because at and the first time, the uh, first few days, adrenaline hit so hard that sometimes we didn't even mm. feel, feel like, tired. Yeah, you just you s- hear the siren wave off and you wake up right away, and then you go to sleep, and then you wake yep. up right away, and you can yep. go and do things. But yep. like we mainly didn't do anything much. But I mean, uh, yeah. but and, it, and even even while sleeping it was a like a a light sleep. light sleep right it yeah it, it light wasn't sleep. it wasn't so for the first week i think we just were like all on adrenaline walking around and like <laughs> i guess so <laughs> i guess the emotions are the reason we uh, uh were tired but the mm-hmm. emotions are the reason we couldn't really sleep right mm-hmm. so uh, it was both we... it was both it was both tiring us and keeping us awake but like that tiredness, like physical tiredness, it came uh, sometime after. Yeah. We oh, started yeah, feeling it later. Yeah. We didn't feel it that much that time, but we started yeah. feeling it later. And later. fun fact, I remember yeah. that for the first two weeks, maybe, or three weeks, uh, I didn't even change it into my pajamas. Because it was like <laughs> we were had to be always yeah. ready to uh, evacuate from our house yeah. so we slept yeah. in the clothes yeah. we wore during, uh, wore during the day and we had our coats here and our boots here and yep. everything ready for everything. Uh, documents so med- like uh, medicine all the necessities yeah right right everything was here in this place and the cats they were always did here you, <laughs> did you have that um, how do they call it in English like the an alert bag like where you yeah. all your stuff back yeah everyone had right everyone had his own so like yes, uh, yeah, i had my own because i remember when i when i came back home after two months and then my my parents still had that emergency uh, emergency bag yeah right yeah, emergency, emergency bag and then they had some snacks in there and i remember after like four <laughs> or five months my mom started pulling out the snacks <laughs> little by little yeah, she was like yeah mm. i guess it's time, <laughs> yeah, it's, time. <laughs> it's safe to it's safe right. to say that you can start eating right. those snacks yeah, right. yeah. Right. yeah that was yeah that was funny and, and then another thing that uh, that is connected to the part w- w- in which I said that we spend most most of our time here because it didn't feel safe anywhere else in the house. Yeah. For the first time in my life, totally. I felt uh, unsafe. Unsafe, endangered. I don't know what. Yeah. I, I in didn't, your own house. In my own house. In my right, own so room. In the whole world, the only safe place you felt was that room. Right. The, the whole only, world. Yes. Whoa. So. I mean, it's the best. It's the best we had. <laughs> Ukraine is our whole world. So. <laughs> right, Ukraine right. was not safe. I mean, yeah, I didn't feel safe sleeping in my room, even taking a bath on the second floor. Like I was just rushing it, so I on would. The second uh, floor, I wasn't feeling safe on the first floor. Yes, and because I was in the, the studio, she's, the studio she's is in. She's way braver. She's way braver. <laughs> Where like, the I'm studio going located? I'm going to a second. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, that's what I did. Even though I, I didn't feel safe, I still but went to the, the second The studio floor. is located in the basement. Yes. So, uh, like, the kitchen is on the right. first floor. So we would, like, go upstairs, upstairs at the, at the on the first floor. 
Right. And yeah, I, I remember this this feeling the first few weeks. Like, um, we first of all we would spend most of the day here mm -hmm. in the studio in our uh, shelter. shelter. Yeah. Um, um, sometimes me and my dad would go out to the streets to like uh, co op with our neighbors and mm -hmm. to just check. <laughs> The... Patrol a little bit. Yeah, patrol because there a little was bit. like a uh, local patrol here on the streets. I remember um, when we had like a, again a gathering of our um, how how do you call it Teroborona? Uh, it's it? a local defense. Local Terrible. defense territorial. Yeah, local territorial ter defense forces. Like local like territorial defense. Yeah, and we gathered in a, in a, in a right. in the center of our village in. A, we call oh. it the club. It's not the club. I, I guess it's in what, uh, <laughs> and not that kind of club. <laughs> Whatever. It's, not, it's a place of gathering. Yeah, for, it's, a, for, it's for, just uh, it's just what we it's call a, it. It's uh, not like a village council. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a village council. So so we gathered there. It's like a a, bit, a huge hall. Yeah, and there was there were a lot of men, like uh, maybe a hundred and something. Mm. What? And they were all yeah. from our village? Huh? Yeah, they were all from our village. Yeah, yeah. So there right. were like really there were over a hundred men gathered wow. in in one in one place, and I remember this like scary feeling where we um, we um, met up with uh, our few neighbors from uh, from our street, and we went to the okay. center of our uh, to the village to that meeting to the, place. Yeah, to the meeting place, and. Um, it's um, it's what like uh, ten p.m., eleven p.m. I don't remember. It was late. I mean, I know it's winter and it, it it's getting dark pretty early. Early, but still, it was it it was pretty late at uh, in the day, and um, even though there were <laughs> there were four of us. <laughs> grown up man but like oh man it was scary like you, you just you just it's it's the night you don't know what to expect like you're nothing against you like the fact yeah, that you're grown up man you have, nothing against we, the weapons we don't know? have any weapons we're regular citizens like right we're just civilians we, we can do anything really so yeah and, again it's some tank or the uh the uh, the what a diversion! Even, even, a a troops, a even yeah. just troops without a tank, <laughs> like we, right. we, we, we couldn't do anything. Yeah, but that the <sighs> that's that was that's thrilling, <laughs> to say the least. Right. But look at us now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was a good pause for the uh, <laughs> like <clears throat> submit section, Friendly. and now we're going to the second part. All right. But look at us now. <laughs> no, but said. look at us now, yeah. <laughs> but he Laughing has changed. about that stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It has changed. A lot. A lot. And our perspective changed a lot and uh Yeah, that We're I... not that naive. Right. We are naive still. I mean we're in we're a way people. <laughs> but like uh, in a different way. Right. Different. Yeah, I mean we just it's just at this point we don't know a lot of like, you know, uh, military and secret stuff that mm. we shouldn't know. Yeah, but uh... but overall, we I think we, well, a lot of a uh, a big part of our population unfortunately still is very naive. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> speaking uh. for ourselves, because we don't represent other people, there are many people actually that you know, we as a society we live, we grow, we are right. not so naive. Um, but I think we one of the things that now prevents us from being as naive as we were in the very beginning is uh, that we mastered the the skill of filtering the information in a way. We yeah. still have right. to, we still True. yet to perfect right. it, but at True. least we, 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 we can sort of see which information is real, which person's saying that, you know, the base is the foundation for those news. Right. And another thing, interesting thing that I heard from from a soldier, which he said, if you hear the news and they awake like emotions in you right away like a lot of emotions mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. check that right away because that might not be the truth so okay. really this yeah. like very emotionally yeah. appealing news might be yeah. the ones that mm -hmm. are not the triggering most you know ones. right mm -hmm. yeah triggering because right. there's 
right now there's a lot of in the media you just you gotta be careful with everything because oh, yeah. you might think that these people you can trust them because they're ukrainians but it doesn't mean that they don't work for russia or they don't yeah uh, or, or they don't post russia. any propaganda just for the sake of the like as a clickbait you know just for 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 the views yeah so they might not even like follow the follow the russian interest meaning right. that they want them to win but like They, they want to earn money. They, they just do their job in a way that you know. <laughs> our our job is to earn money for ourselves. Right. And in order to we need to live, money, right? Have to, yeah, we they have just to have don't like care. Loud, nay, l- scandalous loud, award yeah, or something like that. that. Like, so you gotta be careful about that right now. That's what we've learned because at first we spent, uh, as a matter of fact, the whole day of twenty fourth of February we spent watching the news. The whole day, Watching, literally from 6 a.m. Reading. Till, I don't know, what, 11 maybe? Or what? Or something like that. I think Straight. I, no, I, I I don't think we went to bed this early. No, no, no. We just went downstairs. It, we didn't go to bed, but we just went downstairs. Because we were watching them in our in our living room. I remember my average time on the phone during the first week of the first oh yeah it skyrocketed <laughs> was eight or nine hours per day on the phone can you imagine it's like Oof. a full working day uh right i have to, uh, i have to be honest mine was probably like 12 to 14 hours Mama a day yeah. and it was uh, most of that w- were news yes I Which is mo- mine, most of the mine time would be the same if I wasn't studying. Yeah, I you, right. were, you were you were studying, <laughs> so that that's that's. Uh, right. I wanted to make this point. Yeah, you were mm-hmm. studying abroad, so you like we were just sitting here, like L- in, life in, stopped. In sh- so for the whole country, totally. in a sense. Mm. So totally. Um, yeah, and I I have never consumed so many news as the the first days, first weeks. Ever. Right now, when I especially on days when I know that I have to be like super productive. And focused. And, and focused. <laughs> I don't open the news at all. I would. I may uh, listen to something that my parents would say, or or just uh, open up the news later when I'm finished with my work. But <laughs> if I know that I have to be productive, yep. I don't yep. watch the news because I know that if I see something like another uh, rocket hit uh, the um, house and people died, and it's happening almost every day, and even though it's happening almost every day, every time is so hard to accept every time is it's just hitting me and i i can do anything with myself i feel so um i don't know depressed i don't know to some extent it uh, sure very uh, sad and yeah it's hard so so we we started uh, filtering those news uh, a lot i mean if you time. if you if you're following the news um the actual news uh for the past few months um russia has been hitting a lot of a lot of um missiles they were hitting a lot of uh, civilian Uh, apartment buildings apartment buildings uh a lot of uh, cars got destroyed houses Houses, flats like apartments and Um, people died right yeah Yeah, and it's like so, for the past, I remember because the uh, a year ago in in the fall of twenty twenty three, two two maybe two not this But fall the, the previous fall yeah, right twenty twenty two they had like a a mass massive attack on our energy infrastructure right yeah, right so yeah, it was like was a, a lot 2020. but it these was were mostly, dark times. <laughs> yeah, these those were dark times, <laughs> but like oh, uh, it was complicated. But it's just it was. Of course, they did hit some civilian houses. Yeah, but right. the it was mostly a good percentage of that was infrastructure. This for the past few months, they I I can't recall them hitting anything hit, but attacking anything major except for that for that factory which makes clothes and uniforms for for the right. soldiers. For the soldiers. That was yeah, the one of like the like of the, it's a of the time. It's apartment buildings. Yeah, right. it's only the civilian. Kiev, Dnipro. Um, Lviv as well. Lviv, yeah, way. of course. And uh, I mean, we're not even talking about the east and south. Ah, yes. there, it yes. happens every single day. And in some that's parts the, of the north. That's the thing yeah. that you, oh, when I started going there, because we were like here. When I'm here, right. we only hear the news about like missile attacks in Kiev, Dnipro, big cities right, where, right, right. and they happen compared to the east of Ukraine, like Donetsk, Oblast, and right, right. others. They happen rarely. 
And oh, so yeah. for for people there, you know, there's they start to repost uh, these posts on like missile attack, and that's important to share that and talk about that. But the thing is, on the east of Ukraine, civilians die every single day, like one, two, right. five, ten. But but because uh, I follow day. I follow the local news there, yeah. which are not spread all over Ukraine, and I get the news about people dying there every single day from missiles attack mm-hmm. um, attacks, and that that is um, yeah they're attacking a lot of civilian infrastructure, a lot of civilians. Just you know, it's like it, I sometimes I feel like if they're just uh, they play it as a game. <laughs> On the agenda, we were s- uh, we about were to talk about, about um, the second thing, uh, which we mentioned in the first part about. The fear of the future that right now we have to plan our future. If at the beginning we were, yep, we felt the fear for our future, we didn't know what to expect at all. Like for the, even for the nearest few hours, right now um, we can at least make some plans for the nearest futures, and we have to even make plans for a lo- in a long time perspective. A long time? How long time perspective? That's a good question, actually, but yeah, <laughs> not very long, I think. Depends. I think it depends on on the plan and what it concerns. On a person? On a person, right. I mean, at first, we the, the only thing we planned is to, the, the ways to escape. That's the only thing we planned, actually. Right. Yeah, the rest was... Yeah, in case we, we needed we it. Right. Uh, the rest was just... Just living just through the day. Existing. Right. I would say because uh, it's hard to to tell to 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 call it a living a living mm-hmm. yeah yeah but right now it's um we cannot um just ignore uh, the 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 life uh, we need to plan because I mean mm-hmm. if we want to win the war we have to think strategically not only tactically but strategically so we have to plan ahead like. A lot. Five, ten, twenty years. We have to. Uh, just to be prepared. So it wouldn't be the same roller coaster it was two years ago. Mm. So that's kind of changed too. Yeah. We still don't know what yeah. awaits us in the future. But at this point we understand that we have to plan something. And that we have to not just exist. But try to actually live and be as helpful as we can be. And even that, in that help, we still also have to plan. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> then another thing is about unity. That we were talking so much about in the beginning. Right. Um, well, about that. <laughs> right. It, it changed. It has changed. We still feel the unity, I think, more, more among the people... Um, with I whom mean, we serve, with whom we help, uh, like uh, do volunteer work uh, and other stuff, but I think not as uh, um, globally as it was at first. It's not that we don't feel unity in our country as a nation at all. I guess it's mm-hmm. just um, uh, it gets specific. Like mm-hmm. there's just. Uh, that much people uh, who are interested, who are willing to help, who are willing to do anything uh, for the Ukraine to win, for like to save people and stuff, and uh, that's exactly the people who we feel united with. The people we help, uh, you know. Right. And then, um, then it doesn't feel as as uh, unsafe. At our home right now, I feel pretty safe sleeping in my room, going around uh, on a walk around my village, or just uh, overall in my city. So, yeah, right now, judging from the general picture, I can say that it's pretty safe in here. And, um, yeah, (laughs) there's no more this, like... (laughs) Well, considering uh, that our city is... One of the safest city in Ukraine right now. Right. If we're if we're not taking the the Karpato region, because I guess it's the safest place in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> they don't even have the um, curfew hour, right? Yeah. yeah. They don't. Even they have they don't have that. And that was they... that was so weird because that is uh, that right, is like a right. psychological thing which I have right. in my mind is like 
I remember we, we were used to it. buying. Uh, we were going to uh, Poland. Mm-hmm. Uh, with with my friends to get a car and bring it to Ukraine okay, for the soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember we agreed to... We arrived at the hotel where we had to stay overnight. Mm-hmm. But then we had to get to the border. And, you know, doing all of this process with the car is very mm-hmm. complicated and right. it takes yeah. so long. Yeah. So we were yeah. like, okay, let's wake up at like 2 a.m. and then drive so that we, like very early in the morning, like yeah. 5 a.m. we're at the border. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember waking up and getting outside at 2 a.m. And I'm like, wait, you can be outside at 2 a.m. legally. What? Like, it's permitted. Oh. Like, nobody cares. Because <laughs> at first when they, she suggested that idea, I was like, wait, but you wait, can't, wait, wait. You can't but be... But the curfew hours. Yeah, what are you talking curfew, about? You can't, you can't <laughs> be outside after 12. Like, right. Yeah. It's In not most legal. Parts of the it's country, illegal. Right. But then, yeah, but then... Uh, and then I just... To this day, like when I'm, uh, I I had to be abroad a few times, and I, I just can't wrap it around my Lucky head that you. you cannot be legally <laughs> outside after twelve a.m. Right, and something that yep. is here in our minds, minds. If at first it was very unusual, like having to keep up to the like the curfew hour. I right mean, now at, it feels at, so natural. To the point, to the point, so to, to the it. point where was, sometimes we were frustrated because right. it meddled with uh, our plans a lot. Um, not just any plans, but because we're volunteers and we're <laughs> constantly helping right. people. Sometimes there were there was times where like the curfew hours were like um, really meddling, you mm-hmm. know, with the plans. But uh, I don't know we're so used to it right now. Like uh, we plan. Uh, everything yeah like, and uh, thinking through so that uh, like um, around the curfew hour yeah like even now we have uh what, what time is now it's 10 30 p.m right i have one and a half hour to get home because i can't <laughs> oh, no. be outside after 12 <laughs> oh no oh, this my is God. almost impossible how will you how do are you that gonna, how are you gonna do that <laughs> no she's like literally one minute away from me. I'm on a, I'm on a, <laughs> I'm on a, i got a car and then there's another thing uh, I mean, uh, that you wanted to share while we were preparing uh, I think it concerns the nights and the the uh, feeling of being scared during the nights. And you wanted to share the story about uh, your trip to Ukraine. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you for reminding me that. I forgot. <laughs> planning is good. Yeah, yeah. Planning <laughs> is good and having uh, having a plan. having a plan. Right. Bef- yeah. That's true. Can you put that quote? Having a- one editing. Have an agenda. Have an agenda. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> We're gonna do Life that. Life is easier when you have an agenda. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, f- following the following the plan, um, the agenda, following the agenda, yeah, following the agenda. Um, <laughs> so, uh, like we said, um, it was pretty, it was really scary at, at at the beginning of the full scale invasion and war. Um, but uh, a few weeks ago, I had to go to Kiev uh, because of work, and. Um, we were staying the night at my uncle's, yeah, and um, he's living in the city near Kiev, Irpin. Um, you heard a lot about it in the beginning, yeah. So um, everything was fine, and uh, we just went to sleep. And around seven a.m., uh, we woke up f- uh, because of the two explosions. Yeah, uh, the missiles hit. It hit... In Irpin uh, or in Kiev, you just heard them? We heard them in Irpin. But mm. the, the hits actually were like uh, right at the at the edge of Kiev. Mm. So, mm. But, but okay. that, that's like a few few miles from, from where we were staying. So okay. we heard it pretty well. And... Uh, I don't remember the window shaking. I don't know. But, like, I just opened my eye. Like, the windows aren't shattering. I don't hear any more explosions. I'm going back to sleep. Like, mm-hmm. uh, there, it's going to be a long day for me. Because I had a lot of meetings. And uh, I need some sleep. So, I don't <laughs> care if there's... Expl- if there ex- if there's explosions, so it's totally opposite to the beginning. Of right, the totally. So you're right. You're gonna check the environment so that everything is pretty much safe. So you're going back. Yeah, to I just I just like I, I was like I opened my eye like, 
Okay, it's fine. I, I, I'm going back to sleep. I just turned uh, to the other side and I, and I oh, slept I for another sleep. hour. <laughs> I slept for another yeah. hour because, because I mean, no. Uh, because you need sleep. Yeah, yeah I need sleep. Sleep, sleep, right? is, sleep life. is important. I don't sleep really is have a choice. I, sleep, sleep, sleep is life. <laughs> You're Man. a quote creator. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting a lot of quotes to the end of the episode. Yeah, please uh, <laughs> do my quote book. Or special episode uh, quotes by me. You know what? We're, we're we could make a, make a special episode <laughs> with yeah, the cutouts yeah. of all the quotes of yeah, Diana. I can do that on my birthday. Yeah, oh, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> we still have time. Yeah, we still. Have time. Um, great. Yeah, I can come up with some more quotes for you. Just for us. Mm, how great! <laughs> you have to, <laughs> because yeah. we have to film a lot. About this lot of episodes. <laughs> about this missile attack that you said. Yeah. I remember there was one very stormy night, mm -hmm. and yeah. I, I was sleeping in the same room with my sister. And I remember we all, our whole house, we woke up to this lo um, uh, loud. loud, loud thunder, like crazy okay. loud. Yeah. And it sounded a lot like a missile crazy explosion. Loud. Right. And I remember right. I was oh, half asleep, yeah. and then I remember this. I hear this uh -huh. thunder, and I'm like, "It's a missile hit." Well, well. If it hit, then it won't hit twice, and then I would just <laughs> I went back to sleep. But like, if it hit once, that's okay, true. we're good. That's oh, true. Man. <laughs> oh man, that's so true. Yeah, but that's that's how it is for us. Because sleep true. is life, guys. Right, right. You can't yeah, so, you so... can't win a war if you don't sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't imagine what mental state we're in, mm -hmm. like. Two years into the full scale war. Pretty messed up. Yeah. Uh, well, in a way, messed up. I wouldn't say that we messed up as much as. Mildly people. messed up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely have some. some Issues. Ticks and nicks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but I mean, but uh, they're okay. I already have them. <laughs> uh, I, I guess. I think we can still control them. I guess fireworks way. will be a trigger for a long time I for us. I hate fireworks. Ah, uh, you know what's <laughs> what's more cuz I haven't heard the the fireworks for a long time. But right. what I have heard is uh those things that they put in the cars and then when the car drives it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So loud. I was again, I was abroad and uh a, f a few months ago and I remember standing on the um, uh just talking with my friends and then this car was passing by with the with that thing on their engine or no it's a engine. it's a it's a exhaust system anyway that's guys just, you that's just a tune yeah and then i hear that <laughs> three shots and i'm like it's a shooting i'm like wait i am actually uh i'm actually in prague why would there be a shooting yeah right right yeah. but that's true but i think that it's time to and our video bye yeah um <laughs> to well to to i guess to sum up um it's been two years uh the war is still going ukraine still need needs your help and we really appreciate all the prayers all the right. financial support and and any kind of support and help we're mm -hmm. receiving from from all the other countries um because we wouldn't be able to withstand uh what we have without you without your help mm -hmm. and your prayers mm -hmm. and that's just that's just a blessing and we're we're grateful for that right so um just keep praying for us uh we really need that we really need that and this this is something that we feel and our uh, soldiers feel they tell us a lot of stories about that we need yeah. prayers and also um if you can if you know people whom you can talk about the whole situation in ukraine please share please raise awareness about the whole yeah. situation yeah, in raise ukraine. Awareness. don't make it go away the story about Ukraine. I know that you have a lot of your own troubles, even in your inside your countries, uh, a lot of worries in your lives. But still, please don't forget about us. Please, like, raise awareness about the whole situation in Ukraine, and just at least with your prayers, keep supporting us. And if you can find some reliable people and um, connect with them and uh, actually try to if you want to you can try to help um, in other ways
in a way we talked about in the first episode. Yes, and which we is, also covered that in the second episode. Yeah, <laughs> which is uh, available in uh, or in a three parts uh, state or in a, as a, as a full episode, so you right. can watch that. Plus, um, we're um, yeah, yeah with Diana, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the star of the first episode. Yeah, and we're uh, preparing the first part of the second episode mm -hmm. so it's gonna come out uh right. and somewhere after this episode mm -hmm. all right anyway nothing to add from me just watch the episodes uh right. keep us in your prayers keep uh keep donating keep if you can right yeah keep spreading the word keep spreading yes. the word about ukraine and war and about our podcast yes if we you like it please subscribe hit the notification bell and share with with your yeah. friends yeah. and Family, we uh, promise that some more stuff will be coming soon. Did you uh, did you ask them to like? No, we don't even like. We it. don't even ask you to like. No, I share. do ask you. <laughs> well, I ask you to share. That's the most important part. I uh, yeah. Because so, um, so share for him. Yeah. Subscribe for Ina. For her, like for me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Nice. And yeah. comment comments for all yes. of us. So and for Ukraine. Right. right. Okay. Okay, so uh, that was Podcast Uncensored. I'm Yuri. I'm Ina. Diana. We'll see you in the next one. Right. Bye. Bye. Right here on the couch. We'll see you in, on the couch. Or? Totally. Or, or maybe not. Or on a ceiling? No, we are staying on the couch. I like this format. Staying on the couch. Staying on I, the would, couch. I would do totally. like a... The kitchen episode. The kitchen oh. episode. Yeah, I would eat some food and talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's we gotta buy some ramen or Because I don't think that's a good idea to bring food in here. Oh yeah, it's not a good idea to bring don't the food here, but it's not a good idea to let the people listen how you eat. <laughs> <laughs>